Good afternoon and welcome to the call public meeting of the Henry County Board of Commissioners for 3 p.m. Friday, August 31st, 2012. At this time, I'd like to call the meeting to order and ask for an acceptance of the agenda. Motion by Mr. Holmes and a second by Mr. Bowman. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. The first item on the, uh, on the agenda today is a resolution requesting an extension of the interim agreement with Avports for management of the airport. Our presenter is Fred Alletta, County Manager, and that's handout number one. Thank you, Madam Chair, Board. Um, the meeting the other day, the commissioners voted and asked me to carry back to Avports um, instead of the agreement and the extension of the existing interim agreement for either a period of 180 days, and if that didn't work, 90 days. Um, I spoke with the uh, president of the company, who I've been dealing with for the past year, at that level to make sure uh, he, had, he had the authority to speak or get to where he needed to. His exact words as I had finished talking to him and expressing the uh, request to extend the interim agreement for the period of time 180 or 90 was uh, this is an issue to wrestle with. I mean, that's how his starting point was as far as um, how he basically just digested it and said, as I said, it was an issue to wrestle with, um, obviously hearing it for the first time. Um, he expressed concerns over either amount of days. Um, and um, after discussion, uh, we then agreed that uh, uh, his attorney and our attorney, uh, county attorney, would, together, would get together on Thursday and write something up um, at that point. Um, our county attorney on Thursday uh, got with their attorney, and about 11 o'clock um, we uh, received a call, and uh, county attorney and I talked basically that there was an issue that if the agreement could not be extended and they weren't ready to accept that, that it would expire August 31st today. And if so, there was a liability that their client had as a result of um, the airport manager being on their payroll. And as a result of being on their payroll, um, they would have liability for the weekend. So the only choice they had was we would have to do something different. We talked about many different things, and the only way that it would work was to have a call meeting, which is today. But basically, I talked to uh, um, Ozzy, the president, after that. Uh, his words were that um, they have no desire to cause a problem with the race and that it was okay to extend the agreement for seven days, if that's what we so choose reason I'm here today to extend the agreement a period of seven days, the interim agreement, not the new agreement, but the interim agreement for a period of seven days, which would get us to next Friday. But between now and then, the agreement that they want to present and have the vote, have the board look at, vote one way or the other, accept or reject, um, and I would have that to the board on Tuesday night. Uh, but this is to get us through the weekend with airports. Um, assistance of the airport manager that's on their payroll. Um, in the meeting the other day, I was asked, I think, more than a couple of questions in the two-hour period I was up here. I think one of the questions was, are we covered if we didn't have an agreement with airports? I personally wasn't reflecting on this weekend's race. I probably should have. I was looking at it as a go-forward basis as to if we had an airport manager and we had two other people out there. Uh, the issue for me is that I've been working with our airport manager for the past month, getting things lined up to be ready for this race. It's been at least that long, if not longer, in preparation to make sure we've got the planning right strategically and everything else to make it a successful race for, for all the pilots that, that use the airport and anybody else. So having said that, um, since he is on their payroll and we reimburse that expenditure as, as um, airport manager, and that's the only expenditure we do pay for, and I did say, and I've always said we pay for an airport manager. It's through that process. The problem, as I said, is with him on their payroll, the liability, and so on and so forth, the attorney's concern. Basically, the best way, as um, brought forth today, is to extend the interim agreement, the one that we had, the one that you asked to go back and extend for a period of 90 or 180 days, and only extend it for seven days and that would expire next week. 
next Tuesday's meeting, uh, present, discuss, and everything else that needs to be done with their proposal, and uh, make a decision at that time and go forward. So that's the reason I'm here today. All right, so this contract that we have now currently for management of our airport expires at midnight tonight, and in the absence of extending this for seven days, um, if the board chooses not to do that, then you and some other staff from the county will be over managing the airport on the busiest weekend that that airport experiences <laughs> and the biggest money generator that day, weekend that that airport will experience. Is that basically correct? Do whatever we can, yeah, whatever we got to do. But again, the yes, the person that's been discharged and been putting things together for the past, this is like month plus and planning strategically and everything is, is that person. So yes. Does any board member have a question or comment? I do. Mr. Holder. In thinking ahead, past Tuesday night, this past next Tuesday night, and assuming an agreement is not reached with airports, you mentioned two other employees that are currently at the airport. If the agreement is not reached on Tuesday night, can that airport run with the two employees that are currently there, not including the manager that is working through airports? There would, there would be more of my time having to be put to managing those two people and the activities of it beyond what I'm doing today um, and, and the things that we're still working out with regard to the airport and various things that are going on working with FAA, GDOT, and so on, which I'm doing that. But the coordination with the airport and its operations would put more time on me to manage those two people versus having the manager out there doing what he's doing. But as far as the day-to-day -day operation of the airport, it would still function, am I correct? I feel it would, yes. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay. If not, you have before you a resolution extending the agreement for seven days with airports to get the county through race weekend, and this item will be back on this agenda Tuesday night. And if there are no further questions from the board, I'll entertain a motion. We have a motion by Mr. Bowman. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Staney. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. Thank you. The next item is a resolution regarding a discussion with the cities about the implementation of local excise tax. Our presenter again is our county manager. That's handout number two. The state legislator, le legislate, uh, legislative body this year uh, enacted a, a House Bill um, 386 um, to repeal, if you would, the energy tax on manufacturing. Um, about a week or so ago, ACCG sent a letter out to the chairman, forwarded it to me, and we had discussions as to whether we wanted to or not wanted to, and the discussion came down to, um, as of September 1st, if you're going to enact and reenact, I should say, the tax, let me back up, the tax that was in place on manufacturing the state legislative body went ahead and repealed, including the local sales tax that was being collected. The state legislative body said that the counties can come back and put the tax back on. It's not a new tax. It's so stated in the law and whatever. It's not a new tax. It's just you have to make the option to put it back on. One of the options, though, is to get with the cities and ask them if they want to do it. And that letter comes up that that letter has to be written and delivered to them um, in the mail by September 1st. Um, the discussion we've had was, uh, is this a meeting that has to be called with board approval? Since we had a call meeting today, uh, it gave an opportunity to bring to the board a request to send a letter to the mayors to have a meeting to discuss if the cities and the county want to put this tax, local tax back on in energy for manufacturing concerns. It is not a request to put the tax in place. It is a tax to discuss, is a discussion, a meeting to discuss whether the board and the cities want to do such. There's no obligation to put it in place. It's an informational, educational, what happened, why, how, and the ramifications of it. The one question that, that has been explored and tried to be explored, and I've talked to our state legislative, two of our state legislative representatives to get a handle on this, 
In both cases, and in ACC literature that we've received, there is no way to determine how much money the counties, inner county and everybody else, will lose as a result of this tax. The best you can do is go knocking on doors and figure out who's a manufacturer that would be uh, exempt, if you would, from this tax uh, repeal. And um, at this point, nobody can make a calculation. So as far as how many dollars we would lose, or going to lose, rather, from sales tax, what we were getting in manufacturing, uh, it's, an, it's an issue. Uh, the one issue that, that uh, I have brought up in discussion as to what do we do or don't, which is all part of what we can discuss with the mayors and, and uh, understanding this and the consequences or whatever, is that other counties are obviously in the same position. And to the extent we want to encourage manufacturing to come to Henry County, then I see it, speaking as a county manager, that it could be one of those things that could be a competitive disadvantage if we put it on and the other surrounding counties or those that we compete with do not. But that's something for the board and the mayors to decide if that's what they want to do in this meeting. So the purpose of bringing this up since we're here is to um, request that the uh, chairman be allowed to send a letter to the mayors to set a meeting on uh, September 17th at 1 o'clock at the county administration building uh, with the mayors for the purpose of discussing whether to impose a local excise tax, that meeting will not bind anybody, but each of the boards or the board here would have to come back, discuss it, and um, uh, vote on it, obviously. But this is just to determine, this is just basically to find out what this is all about, and the consequences can be discussed and everything else. This is at least to have an opportunity for the county and the cities to have an open discussion before it passes, because if you don't do this letter by September 1st. You still can do it effective 2014. You just have to wait a year. So it's it's not a rushed out have to do. It's a discussion, as I said, to uh, to it. And this this request, as I said, is just to allow the chairman to send the letter to the mayors for this meeting to discuss it. I think the purpose that the General Assembly had in repealing um, the energy tax was to make Georgia more competitive with surrounding states who currently do not have that in place. But what this is doing today is simply sending a letter to be in compliance with the law that was signed into law by the governor that we notify the mayors that this has indeed passed the General Assembly and just to have a discussion about where the county wants to go in the future as far as whether we want to collect it or we don't want to collect it. So it's just a discussion. Commissioner Bowman. I, I, and, and this, I'd probably ask this question later, I, but would we know what counties around us exercise the option, or is there a way that we would know that so that we would know what our competition is doing? Or do I, we, I, I was uh, with a group of counties at a meeting, ACCG meeting or whatever, uh, about a week ago, I think it was, a week and a half ago, and I spoke with um, uh, Charlotte Nash, the uh, chairman, Gwinnett and asked her what they were going to do and asked to try to get some interpretation because it's that's when about this email came up on the subject and try to get some information to her. She was unclear of a lot of things as I was as to an interpretation of this September 1st and can you and what happens and whatever. But she said they were going to proceed, and this is just one, going to proceed to have the meeting, did not know where it was going to go. Um, counties that have high manufacturing, such as, um, I'm sorry, Dalton. Dalton, that's it. I, thank you. I, I knew there was one where they've got all the carpet mills and, and everything else up there. They are higher users of electricity. Those probably um, are going to lose a lot of revenue in the process. So uh, that's an issue they're obviously going to take up if they want to get that revenue back or be competitive to bring more industry or what. And again, for Henry County, I don't know of other counties. I suspect they're going through the same process of getting this letter out, having their meetings, and then the collective cities and county at that point will decide whether it's worth the effort to put it in place. But the key thing is, in every discussion I've had, trying to seek an answer, and there's even information that I've got from ACCG in writing that says there is no way to find out how much revenue you're losing. Mr. Holder. I certainly think that before this decision is made, not to put it before the cities, but to determine whether 
we want to exempt it of whatever, we certainly need to look at what exists right here in our county. And this is not in our county, but a good example is Monroe County. And we see every train, every car load of coal that goes through daily. That sales tax that Monroe County gets. If that's eliminated, think what it would do to them. But let's bring it a little closer home. We'll take Snapper as an example, sitting right here in McDonald. And their power bill, now if we're talking about exemption on energy, we're talking about exempting the sales tax on all of their power bills. We're talking about our plastics plants that are very high users of, of some of the highest users of uh, electricity. That means that those would be exempt also from taxation, from sales tax. What does this do then to our lost, our splossed, all of the taxes that the county can receive? I'm not saying that we don't need to exempt it, but I, let's, let's, let's certainly see what impact it's going to do to us if we do. And obviously, we are in a competitive world. And we do need to see what other counties are doing, but we need to look at what it's going to do and what it's going, how it's actually going to impact our obligations for Henry County. There, there is a, as you mentioned, and there's another manufacturer I was thinking of in Hampton, which is Southern States, Southern and there's States, another good uh, example. the roofing company out there. And there, there are manufacturers in Henry County. We are not without manufacturing. As I said, I can't put a dollar figure on whether the plastics spend a lot versus southern states versus snapper. Um, but there's more intensity, you know, in some of those than others. And um, so the, the amount they pay, uh, how much they're paying, and what it would cost them, you know, what they're saving but versus they still would get the state portion. It's just the county being allowed by state legislative body saying the counties can put it back in, our portion. So, I, but they did repeal the whole thing. I happen to know this when you're speaking of plastics. <coughs> of Central Georgia EMC's customers, and that includes Millard Refrigeration, which is a cold storage. It includes the Henry County Water Authority, which is the largest customer that they have at this point. But the plastics company that I think it may be even defunct now, but nevertheless was the second highest user of power that Central Georgia had, including Willard and including many of these uh, warehouses and complexes around the uh, 155 corridor. So they do use a lot of plastic, uh, use a lot of electricity. And I think once we start to look into it further, you're going to see that there are more manufacturers here than we really think they are. And when that adds up, you're going to see that 7% <laughs> is going to be significant on in sales tax. Well, actually, three, three cents for our part. Right. Two Understand. for us and one for the VOE. Yeah, that's right. Three, well, it's three part percent of here. that, too. I'm, I'm sorry. We should. Part of that, I mean, Carter's uses a fair amount of electricity because they do some manufacturing as well as their distribution and also uh, I think another one would be uh, the county's full of them but I mean um, Carter being one I think it's is it Ara shirt which one of, that just put in the manufacturing is doing that's actually making clothing now that we that the, our uh, Van Heusen Van Heusen that was it I was thinking a shirt manufacturer, but I'm sure that they use a lot too. The only, my, the, what only prompted my question is to be sure that, you know, to know what obviously, I think it's very obvious that we need to know, you know, what we're talking about as far as, and I think you're 100% correct, Commissioner Holder, that that needs to be looked at as well as, you know, who's doing it that, in the counties that uh, we would be in competition with because it may, very well may not make any sense at all. I, in my discussions, uh, to try to get an understanding of it, not with our county attorney because of, I haven't had a chance to go, but I was trying to do some research, and I got some mixed signals, so I've really got to get the actual law because a couple of things that I've been told were conflicting from two different parties uh, in the state legislative body, so I'm not sure which is which as far as um, 
what it is, but obviously the law is the law and we'll have that reviewed and so on. And uh, I do not believe, and this is where a lot of this, I think what we got from ACCG and their recapital law is somewhat ambiguous as to, you know, what, how it was written. So the end result is as far as the um, 17th meeting, and I, I defer to a county, man, a county attorney on this, and that is the 17th meeting is, as I believe I understand this, does not have to walk away with the decision one way or the other, and we can have other meetings after that. If, but again, to get it imposed, if you would, by the first of the year, there's got to be a cutoff date that's got to get it done. I don't know what that is. So that's not really, I'm not sure of that answer, but that's, that's what I don't. Right. I don't think you have to have a final decision at the first meeting, but before the imposition, if the cities agree, then the law requires an intergovernmental agreement to be entered into between the county and the participating cities. And so all of that would have to be done. And obviously that would take additional meetings to get those approved before the tax would be enacted. In that legislation, did it also address the issue if you perhaps you may have three cities that are in favor of keeping the excise tax, one city in the county maybe a, is opposed to it? How does the legislation address those issues that we may encounter? Um, it's, the cities have to participate voluntarily. So those that don't participate don't share in the um, proceeds from the tax. Um, all of the cities could opt not to do it, and only the county, and in that instance, the county would be the beneficiary of the tax if the board decides to impose the tax. Um, the law requires if all the jurisdictions within Henry County agree to do this, then you use the same distribution formula that you use for your lost and your SPLOS. Um, some jurisdictions have both a loss and a SPLOS, and like we do, and so in that instance, half of this uh, tax proceeds will be um, distributed according to the loss formula. The other half will be distributed according to the um, SPLOS formula to add more confusion <laughs> to the process. So <laughs> it, I'm not sure, and, and the interesting thing about it so far that we have been deter determined, you can't tell how much money you will lose until you impose the tax. This is what is the, this is the official word that's coming down from ACCG in the Department of Revenue. And it's the strangest thing I've ever seen. So you really aren't going to get a good picture from what they're telling us beforehand until after you impose the tax. And I, and I think you may have said this, but just um, in the, you were asking about the cities, three of the four, or however, in our case. But there's also what it also one of the questions ACCG had had on here and an answer to is what if the county refuses to enact the tax but the city wants to impose it? And the answer that they gave is after January 13, if a county has failed to impose the tax, then any city can impose the tax at the same rate but only on energy sold within their jurisdiction. So it, it sounds to me based on this answer that if the county doesn't want it, the cities do, they still can proceed. It's their choice. At that point, we don't have to participate. Okay. Mr. Holder. If I could ask the attorney a question. Yes, sir. In all of our negotiations, Henry County has a tax code of 075, correct? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm, okay. not, I'm not sure if I'm... Okay. The tax, the tax district code is 075. Yes, 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 sir. How? Are they going to determine <laughs> what is in the city and what is in the county? This is an argument that we've had since day one, <coughs> dealing with splossed and lost. It will be a countywide tax. And this okay. distributed, that's why the county has to initiate this. That's is why that the correct? county will have to initiate it. It will be a countywide tax distributed according to your lost and splossed formulas. Okay, another thing to think about so regardless in the future. Of, regardless of where it originates. Another thing to think about in the future. If one accepts it and the other one doesn't, what's that going to do to the annexation rate in Henry County? Those are the, what you call unintended consequences? Unint or? Okay, <laughs> unintended <laughs> consequences. I'm just saying we know what happened when we had uh, impact fees in one area, didn't in another, yes, and sir. what it did to the the uh, city limits of all cities in Henry County, with the yes, exception sir. of Hampton. Hampton kept a, yes, a good city limits. Everybody else looks like scrambled eggs. 
And I guess that's what you all would discuss at your meeting. And just um, the county manager hadn't said it, but we, the letter that we propose to be sent out to you all sets a date of November 17th at 1 o'clock here at the county administration building for that initial meeting. So they'll say no, September 17th. <laughs> So all we're doing today is we're approving, sending the letter out to call the meeting so we're in compliance with the uh, with House Bill 386, which says we must send the letter by today. Yes, if, if you want to do anything. You don't have to do it, but if you at least want to have the discussions, if you, heard me, if you want to do it, you have to have that out. You have the discussions. That's, that's, that's it. You don't have the letter out by the first, you can't have the discussions for 2013. All I can say is thank goodness for the ACCG that's kept us apprised of all of this. Otherwise, we would have, it probably would have just expired and we would have had no idea. And we'll try, as staff will try, um, Madam Chairman, board members, to get as much information as we can get for that meeting in preparation of the meeting. And I'll get in contact with the city attorneys to see what type of inf objective information we can gather up so that at least the um, governing bodies will have something to discuss, something solid to discuss. Mr. Steamy? Well, it would actually take four years to get the true number because it's a phase out, right? I, again, as I said earlier, I've talked to a couple of people and I've got different it's a phase answers out. to it. And it I've heard right it's here. a phase in at 25 percent per year is what I heard. <laughs> and, it, and I think by 2016, if you don't and you want to go in 2016, you, you go 100 percent, but it's a 25 percent per year phase. And, I haven't read that, but I, again, I'm rather than quote stuff at this point before we have the discussion. I didn't want to get into giving you in, incorrect facts, but I had heard that that was a phase in. So, any other questions? If not, um, I need a motion for someone to transmit these letters to the city to call for a meeting on Monday, September 17, 2012, at 1 p.m in order to discuss House Bill 386 as it relates to the energy use tax. Have a motion by Mr. Holder, second by Mr. Bowman. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. There's no further items on the agenda. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Holmes, second by Mr. Stamey. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. We stand adjourned.